Hi, it's Miss Vitale. This podcast is on photosynthesis. It is meant to correspond with Chapter 10 in AP Biology. Early in the 17th century, Belgian physician and alchemist Johann Baptista van Helmont laid the foundations for photosynthesis. He was born in 1579 and he died in 1646. Photosynthesis is the process that changes light energy into the energy of chemical bonds. Van Helmont's experiment was very simple and dramatic. Scientists have admired it for over 400 years. Van Helmont was a deeply religious and fanat- and was deeply religious and fanatical about his beliefs. As a teenager at the University of Louvain, which was a Catholic school, he refused the Master of Arts because he didn't learn anything substantial or true. He studied medicine, particularly herbal medicine, but he didn't practice it because he didn't think he learned anything that would actually help people. He became interested in alchemy, which he said was a calling from God. At 28 years old, he married a woman so rich he never had to work again, although he always said he hated money. For 15 years, he did his own research. Some of the things that he determined and discovered is digestion is accompanied by bile and acid. The lungs are organs for gas exchange. And most importantly, he was the discoverer of gas as a form of matter. He wrote about his discoveries, criticizing others and attacking practicing physicians for their ignorance. He also attacked Catholics for their ignorance and arrogance. The Spanish Inquisition imprisoned and interrogated him from 1624 to 1642. He continued to work and write while he was imprisoned. One of the things that he looked at was that Aristotle said plants derive their sustenance from soil. Van Helmont disputed that because plants in a pot don't use up their soil. So this is where he did his famous experiment. He planted a five pound willow sapling in 200 pounds of soil. He dried the soil and weighed it and then put it in a large pot. He covered the soil to prevent dust from getting in and he watered it as needed. After five years, he weighed the soil and the tree. The tree went from five pounds to 169 pounds and the soil only lost two ounces. So Van Helmont said that the weight of the tree came from the water. His experiment was excellent, but his conclusion was wrong. And it was very ironic because as the discoverer of gas as a form of matter, he didn't consider something in the air that might have contributed to the growth of the tree. The first suggestion that air contributes to the stuff of plants came from the use of microscopes. Late in the 17th century, minute pores in the leaves of plants called stomata were discovered. Stomata appeared to pass air back and forth in and out of the leaves. If a mouse is put in a jar that's airtight, it would die. But in the 1770s, an English clergyman, Joseph Priestley, put a sprig of mint in in a jar with a mouse, and the mouse stayed alive. At the same time, Anton Lavoisier discovered oxygen. The credit goes to both men that plants take in oxygen and release CO2. They also respire. In other words, they also do cellular respiration. So they take in oxygen and release CO2. They do photosynthesis in the light and in the light and in the dark, they respire. The overall equation for photosynthesis is six carbon dioxides plus six water using the energy from sunlight produces glucose and six oxygens. Autotrophs are organisms that do photosynthesis. An An autotroph is an organism that can make its own organic molecules from simple molecules. They are also called producers. Heterotrophs are organisms that cannot derive energy from sunlight. They must obtain their energy by degrading organic molecules. They are also called consumers. Julius Mayer, one of the discoverers of the first law of thermodynamics, elegantly summarized photosynthesis. He said, nature has put itself the problem of how to catch in flight light streaming to the earth and to store the most elusive of all powers in rigid form. So what is light? It's not matter because it's not made of atoms. 
it's actually a form of energy. Light is always moving until something absorbs it. Then it is no longer light, but some other kind of energy. If your shirt absorbs light, it turns to heat. Ordinary rules can't describe light. It moves like particles, and it moves like waves. What it's actually made of is photons, which are packets of energy. Visible light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum consists of all types of radiation that travel through space as periodically energy-changing electrical and magnetic forces. The fluctuation of forces are measured in wavelengths. A wavelength is the distance between the crests of two waves. It can vary from kilometers to nanometers, which are a billionth of a meter. Visible light is the light of our everyday experiences. Our eyes and brains allow us only to see wavelengths from about 390 to 760 nanometers. 400 nanometers is violet or purple, and about 700 nanometers is red. A pigment is a molecule that absorbs wavelengths in the visible spectrum. It absorbs only certain wavelengths of light. Dyes are an example of a pigment that shows a specific color. Black is the absorption of all colors, and white is the reflection of all colors. A given type of molecule can absorb only certain wavelengths. If we plot a compound's absorption of light as a function of the wavelength, the result is an absorption spectrum. Absorption spectra can act as fingerprints for compounds. They can be used to identify a compound. A spectrophotometer is an instrument that measures the absorption of wavelengths of color. Chlorophyll is the green pigment associated with chloroplasts and or in certain bacterial membranes that do photosynthesis. Chlorophyll traps light energy for photosynthesis. It's found in plants, photosynthetic bacteria, which are called cyanobacteria, and photosynthetic protists, which are algae. In plants, two chlorophylls predominate, chlorophyll A and B. As you can see from the molecules, they differ only slightly in their molecular structure. Both have a, com a complex ring structure with a magnesium atom in the middle. The ring has a long hydrocarbon tail that adheres the chlorophyll molecule to the thylakoid membrane. Chlorophyll A is slightly blue-green. Chlorophyll B is slightly yellow-green. Accessory pigments absorb colors between blue and red and transfer that energy to the chlorophyll. This way, more of the energy in the visible spectrum is used. Carotenoids are accessory pigments. Beta carotene absorbs photons in the blue and the blue-green wavelengths and appears deep yellow. Carotenoids may not only transfer energy to chlorophyll, but may absorb excess energy that could actually damage the chlorophyll. Accessory pigments work with chlorophylls to create an energy-absorbing antenna system covering most of the visible spectrum. Pigment molecules become excited when they absorb a photon. What that means is when they become excited, an electron jumps up energy levels. The ground state is normal, and the excited state is when the atom absorbs energy and electrons start to jump up energy levels away from the nucleus. Since each color in the visible spectrum has a specific wavelength, therefore a specific energy, a molecule will only absorb photon with the exact amount of energy equal to the difference between the ground and the excited state. The chlorophyll molecules that absorb light are in the membrane of the thylakoid. If the electron falls back to the ground level, a photon is given off. This causes the atom to glow, which is the mechanism behind fluorescence. Clearly, that doesn't happen in plants because plants don't fluoresce. However, 
rather than emitting light, the photon's energy as, as fluorescence, the pigment molecule may pass the absorbing energy along. So in the case of plants, the electron actually leaves the atom and or the molecule and is transferred to another atom in a molecule. The pigments in photosynthesis are arranged in energy absorbing antenna systems. These are the molecules that are held together by a complex of proteins in the right order for light absorption. The excited pigment molecule passes the excitation to the next molecule in the antenna system. The energy moves from molecules that absorb shorter wavelengths to ones that absorb longer wavelengths. The energy winds up in a pigment molecule that occupies the reaction center of the antenna. The reaction center converts the light energy into chemical energy. In plants, it is always a molecule of chlorophyll A. The light energy transferred through the antenna system is transferred as an electron. So the second molecule is reduced because it gains an electron by the first molecule. Because the electron moves from molecule to molecule, it doesn't fall back to the ground state and therefore doesn't fluoresce. The chlorophyll molecules and proteins of the antenna complex are arranged into photosystems, which are embedded in the thylakoid membrane. There are two types of photosystems, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. 